So uh, today we're going to talk about VXLANs. It's a virtual extended local area network where we extend VLANs. And instead of using trunk on this link, which would be possible if your sites or switches are close in proximity uh, and you can connect them through fiber cables but what if you cannot, you have a routed network in the net, in the middle, for example, if you have an internet, or for that matter, you have an MPLS network from a provider, and both internet and MPLS is an IP network. So in that case, if you want to have a VLAN get extended over that IP cloud, an IP cloud is a routed IP cloud, whether it's internet and private MPLS or whatever. You can, so you cannot use trunks now because trunk is point to point and it needs physical connections. Uh, so another way to do the trunking over an IP route is using VXLANs. And VXLAN is essentially putting a layer two packet inside a layer three packet. So it encapsulates and we look, we'll, today we'll look at the example here where this computer, which is sitting on 10.1.1 subnet and uh, the other second computer on the other side is also sitting on 10.1.1 subnet, same subnet, same VLANs. They want to talk to each other, but they're connected through an IP network. Let's just say the Internet. And what you can do is you can connect these two L3 switches. In this case, it's the Arista switches that we downloaded and installed. You can configure these Arista switches, L3 switches for VXLANs. And we'll take a look at the configuration. But for, for that to happen, let me describe the requirements you need to have a loopback on both of these switches, a slash 32 host route. And that host route needs to be reachable between the two. So if you have an internet or an MPLS network, you would need to get this two addresses that are configured on both ends to be reachable on these switches. Once that has happened, the configuration is pretty straightforward. You configure VXLAN interface on both sides. And you put this VLAN or map it in to this interface and map it to a VNI and it should work. Let's take a look at the example that we have put in place. So we have the two switches right here. We got the two routers configured, show interface, 1011, 10.1.1.2, and the two switches, they're connecting to the two switches. And uh, show run interface E1 is a simple access port connecting to this guy. Same as the case here. Show interface E, show run interface E1. E1 is connected to this guy as an access port. E2 is connecting both of them. So E2 is a router port in our case. see where I'm using OSPF uh, routing. Then we have the show run interface loopback one. That's the slash 32 that I am advertising in OSPF for reachability. And show run interface VXLAN one.
here the VXLAN essentially is sourcing through this loopback and it's targeting this loopback. So you need the reachability between the two loopbacks. You just need to put in UDP ports that it's gonna work through. And you need to map your VLAN that your port is connected to, in this case was VLAN 10. VLAN 10 maps to VNI 10, and I'm gonna flood all my broadcasts to this VTEP. It's a unicast, it's not an eVPN, BGP eVPN configuration, it's a unicast uh, configuration that is only supported in my knowledge with Arista switches. It makes it easy for uh, small level deployments, testing environments without enabling BGP EVPN, uh, obviously EVPN BGP is a is a advanced level protocol that we will uh, look at later on. But it uh, you know for most network engineers they're not comfortable with BGP. So a unicast would do the trick, and you can configure as many unicast flood taps with the VNIs uh, and the VLANs as from one point to other switches to uh, connect and extend this VLAN anywhere on any switch you want. But uh, with this simple configuration, you are able to ping your other side. And you can see VXLAN address table that it gives you the MAC address learning automatically. And it so conveniently extends the VLANs over any IP cloud internet MPLS. The only trick is that your loopback needs to be reachable. So it should be very easy if you have public IPs available over the internet or if you have a private MPLS network uh, or it's private circuits, should be a piece of cake as long as you got the L3 switch that supports VXLAN.